Hi, my name is Jamie Evans and I'm Pro Vice Chancellor Education at the University of Melbourne. And it's an absolute delight to welcome you to this evening's event on graduate study at the University of Melbourne. But before I go on, I really would like to acknowledge the Wurundjeri people, the traditional owners of the land on which the Parkville campus stands and pay my respects to their elders past and present. And if you think about it, um, it's not 200 years, but it's for thousands and thousands of years that knowledge has been created and has been shared on these lands. Joining me in the discussion today are two amazing colleagues, Melissa and Jane, who will introduce themselves in a minute, and some alumni of us. We have Ash and Ji Weng with us, and as I said, they'll all introduce themselves in a minute. Together, we're going to discuss the benefits and challenges of graduate study. Why would you do it? Is it to uh, get extra disciplinary depth and specialise? Is it to, to change career, to do something else, to go in a new direction? So some of the many things we will explore. You have opportunity to submit questions you would like to pose to our panel, and hopefully we'll get to those at the end. If you see me looking at my phone, it's to have a look at the, the questions that are coming through. But we also have a whole lot of staff behind the scenes who are ready to answer your questions online. So without further ado, panellists, we'd love to for you to tell us a little bit about yourselves and let's start with Melissa. Thanks, Jamie. Um, I have the privilege of being the Deputy Head of School at MSpace, which is the Melbourne School of Professional and Continuing Education. I have one of these long titles that keeps on going, so get yourselves a cup of tea. Yeah. Um, Academic Director Curriculum and Transformation, uh -huh. which means I work with faculties to design contemporary curriculum that, with learning that sticks, getting in touch with your emotion. Uh, and also co-chair non-Indigenous of the University of Melbourne's Reconciliation Network Committee. And as such, I would also like to take this moment to pause and reflect on country on which we join today to share our, uh, our ideas and experiences, uh, the lands of the Wiradjuri people of the Kulin Nations, and acknowledge the cultural knowledges, creative practices and diplomacies undertaken on this country for thousands of generations. Uh, but also to acknowledge any First Peoples that might be with us today. I've got a performing uh, and creative arts background. I'm a material culture scholar practitioner. One of the questions yeah. might be, what the hell is that? <laughs> um, I have an active artistic practice and study objects as carriers of meaning. Objects can tell great stories. That's me. Object-based learning. Well, object-based, yeah. Object biographies okay. and object-based learning is where I live. Fantastic. Jane. Thanks. Hi. <laughs> um, I'm Jane. I'm a career specialist within the careers and employability team here at University of Melbourne. And we're a team of careers experts that are available to current students, but also to past students um, for a little bit of time after you've graduated to help you with all things careers and employability while you're here. Um, I love my job. It's great to see students develop themselves as they progress through their career. Uh, and I'm also alumni and did my uh, teaching studies here in this very building. So um, yeah, thank Fantastic. you. Fantastic. Ji Wang. I'm, so I'm Xi Wang and I've studied Bachelor of Science at Melbourne University and then after that I went to do my Masters of Engineering also at Melbourne University, finished in 2016, that's kind of quite long. <laughs> and then after that I went to become a, I, I, I did a, a bit of engineering but I ended up as a weather forecaster at the Bureau of Meteorology so it went off the tracks. And now I'm a climatologist with the Bureau of Meteorology. So I work with the climate data, help to make it into a form more valuable to community and also to communicate and interpret it for us as well. Well, that's, that's a, you're the one we blame if it says it's going to be a beautiful sunny day and it rains on us. Is that right? Do you Correct. cop that a lot? It cop that every time. Oh, I my say. goodness. Yeah. It's well, a tough job. I always say that it's, it's just a chance thing. You know, you can say it's a 50% chance of rain. doesn't mean it's going to rain. It's just, you know, it's, that's, that gives you a way out of that kind of <laughs> blame. I've noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> Terrific. And Ash? Uh, yeah, so Ash Blair uh, also did a Bachelor of Science here at the Melbourne uh, University and then followed with a Master's in Engineering as well uh, in Chemical Engineering. 
Uh, I worked a little bit as well as an engineer. I worked at a company called PPG, does paint manufacturing. I did that um, for a little bit of time and then when I finished, went and started a graduate program at Cartland United Breweries and have been there for the last five and a half years or so, working through mostly the commercial side of the business. So now I work in strategy, which is sort of the buying and selling of companies and um, trying to, to look at where we can expand and how we do business with ourselves and, and our customers. Um, so also have ventured a little bit further away from the engineering path, excuse me, but um, yeah, still definitely uh, hold Melbourne Uni very highly uh, in high regard. I had a great time with my studies here. So while we're, while we're on you, um, so you finished a Bachelor of Science and then made the decision to go into graduate study. What was your sort of reasoning behind uh, yeah. doing that? I think one of the great things about Melbourne Uni is that they've got that track program. So you do your Bachelor of Science and if you choose to major in one field or another, that sort of allows you to progress through to the Masters of Engineering really seamlessly. So I knew that I loved chemistry, I loved maths. Engineering was always high as an option for me to choose as postgraduate study. And then I guess I just loved it. When, when I did the chemical systems major, at, um, I had a, had a subject in the second year that sort of switched me over from being, oh, maybe it's chem eng, maybe it's gonna be something else, to no, this is definitely, definitely what I wanna study. And yeah, the, the choice was pretty easy after that, actually. Okay. So by the time you did finished your third year, you were you were, you were pretty set. It was it was like uh, halfway through the second year, I was done. Yeah, I yep. made the decision to okay. pursue the masters. Yeah, it's cool. interesting because in preparing prepping some of these questions, I was thinking, you know, what undergraduate does is prepare or give you a foundation, um, and it's part of the wayfinding process. And I've I've got a, a phrase here that it incites desire, and I've heard you use the word love and desire in that. Um, brief explanation yeah, yeah. of where you went and so I'm, I'm like yep tick great uh, it's a lovely example. Shi Wang how about you was it a, a similar story for you in terms of deciding to do graduate study? Uh, I'm not sure how similar it is but I think like Ash I did the engineering pathway as well so you know it's quite mandatory to continue doing graduate study to be qualified as an engineer and mm -hmm. at the time I didn't think too much about it but in hindsight I wouldn't have given it up um, you know, it's really something I have no regrets doing. Terrific. Um, Jane, in terms of, you work a lot with, in, with employers, I guess, in, in the area that you're in. Um, what do you think from their point of view, why should students consider graduate study? What are the advantages? Yeah, sure. So in my work, I'm often talking with students about uh, considering the employer's point of view and I think it's a really important thing to engage with whilst you're here studying, mm -hmm. understanding what it is employers are looking for. Um, and you know, people will probably know this, employers tell us consistently they want great communicators, they want people that can collaborate, they want people um, that have good strong interpersonal skills. and. Most undergrad programs will give you a really good opportunity to develop that. But I think where the competitive edge comes in with graduate study is that higher level of skill. So that critical analysis, um, that dis well informed decision making um, skills, um, creative problem solving, as well as the access to the latest knowledge and ideas, you know, within a, a particular industry yeah. is really where it, it ramps up in comparison to your undergrad, I think, yeah. Even on that, like I think that the, the way that an undergraduate study is, like the, the coursework is set up, it, it's quite um, individual. You know, you, you do your coursework, you sit your exams. Once you move into postgraduate study, like a, in an engineering program, it's a lot more project-based and you are collaborating a lot more with students from a broad range of backgrounds and other disciplines. Not everyone comes through like a science track. I know I had a lot of peers that came through commerce and so, you end up working with the people, broad range of age groups, um, different backgrounds, and you, you do have to solve problems in a way that you probably haven't had to do in the undergrad system. So it's a and massive, I, I yeah, guess massive that, benefit. That mirrors yeah. the workplace, doesn't it? That that is who you have to work with, a whole range of different people. So getting to build that skill while you're here, yeah, definitely, um, yeah, is a real advantage. Is, is there an element of people being, I guess, the average age is is, is higher? in the graduate study as well, both even, even if people have progressed straight through, but often people have gone and done other things and come back into the, the graduate study as well. Is there a sense that the students are more um, in, serious and engaged and sort of have a 
more certainty about why they're there compared to undergraduate? I think you've got to make a conscious decision to do postgraduate study. And so sometimes people I know will take, you know, go down to do a bachelor's degree in whatever field simply because they think it's, ex it's expected of them in some respects. Yeah. So they'll do that and they go, okay, I'll pick something because my parents want me to or because, you know, I think this is the path I should take. But m once you enter postgraduate study, no one's really, like, I can't imagine there are too many people being forced into it. And so you really think long and hard about what you want to do, what you want to study and why you're there. And once you're in it, you've got to make the most of it. Yeah, I found that there was people from, you know, a wider range of, you know, ages and backgrounds and managed to make friends with people from all over the world. And then building on what you said about um, the project-based experience, I think in undergrad, there's a lot of content and knowledge-driven kind of coursework, but in graduate, in the masters, I found that a lot of the work was more complete, like it was trying to finish, finish a project and you feel like it was something that was more relatable or realistic, like a real life scenario. Very rewarding as well, so. delivering like a tangible project. Yeah. Yeah, it, def it felt more complete, like what, what we were doing. It wasn't just like figure out the sum. It was like, you know, you're doing something to, uh, for like a project that you could relate to, I think. So a lot more, uh, I guess it is that sense, a lot more authentic in terms of the assessment. We'd call it experiential learning a, a, a little bit, I guess. What, do you want to tell us a little bit about some of the, some of the projects you did do? Uh, maybe uh, Ash first? Um, looking back a little while now, some of the projects, I remember my capstone was a great one. We designed a dimethyl ether plant. As a, a what? Dimethyl ether plant. It's a dimethyl ether, ether yeah. plant. Right. It's okay. a uh, clean we'll energy, you. yeah, clean fuel <laughs> alternative or cleaner fuel alternative. Yep. So, um, yeah, like we, you would design it in a group of six, uh, and effectively had six months or a full semester to um, to nut out everything from feasibility, does it work, how would you do it, all the way to sizing every piece of equipment on this plant, making sure you've got um, you know P and IDs, the process instrumentation diagrams for the whole plant operating procedures, the works. So it's, um, it's a really great end-to-end -end project. It's really exciting like that. That sticks in my mind as, um, yeah, probably the best project we had to do actually. Yeah. Yeah, I have, should we? Yeah. I can, I have a really fond memory of this one project where we went to Dookie and that's like, I don't know, a few hours away from here and it's a few trip and we stayed overnight and it was to do a, uh, measuring like um, chemical levels in a river. So I was doing a fuel study and it really felt like, you know, this is what an environmental engineer does. And, right. and yes. you get to go out to the field and yeah, you take samples yourself and do the test and then write up the report. It just really felt like, well, this is, this is what work is like. It was fun to go outside too. <laughs> yeah, indeed. On Yorta Yorta country, up there, oh. Dookie. Yeah. And that must have been pre-COVID, of course, where we... Oh, yeah. <laughs> don't think anyone's had COVID back then. <laughs> um, Melissa, a question for you then, exploring this, you know, differences in mm. undergraduate and graduate study. What, what are your reflections on that? Well, uh, as I mentioned before, I've, I always feel that the undergraduate is a place to explore a broad range of uh, subjects, to learn to know yourself. It's a foundation for future career... Z so I don't, we, didn't, we don't have one career anymore. Um, we learn skills, we, we sort of get the skills and tools to learn to know, to learn to learn, um, to learn to become curious, and to just to incite desire, which is, which is great. And I think then that graduate study builds on those um, elements, um, where interest and knowledge is pr a, a, a prov uh, given space to flourish. So you can deep dive with discipline expertise, you can experiment, research, collaborate, importantly, create, practice, um, and become more independent thinkers and practitioners. Uh, and to consider your world of work and research and think about what compels you. So I, I think as a postgraduate person, there's an independence there about what you need from your training and you kind of grab it um, and run with it. So the, the classroom experience, and classroom is absolutely in inverted commas because mm -hmm. I don't know what, a classroom for you was on country, uh, outside in a river. I wish there was more of that. Yeah. Usually it was, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's <laughs> right. I've had students in classrooms which are the ocean um, in a design context. But anyway, um, and so I think this classroom experience in whatever shape it is, online, face-to-face, -face, where we're bringing diverse people cohorts together, sharing, 
different experiences and different ambitions in a classroom. Um, we're looking at ideas, we're challenging norms, we're challenging things constantly. We're learning to empathise and problem create and problem solving. Problem solving is the easy bit. Problem creation is the fun bit. And I think we graduate study also gives us a chance to test our ideas, to use the theory and try and break it. Um, but importantly, one of the best things about graduate study for me is failure. So if you can fail, just do it spectacularly and use it as an opportunity outside of the workplace to break the things that perhaps need breaking, but take the feedback and apply it sensibly. Don't fail over and over again, that's just silly. Um, but I think it's a place to, it's a really great place to change, to I've, play. I've certainly, uh, now that I've failed many times in my own teaching, so um, I can totally understand. Yeah, it's great. And, and my own postgraduate study as a sort of mature person coming to it was transformative. It gave me a place to grow and to find a place to be a creative, informed human. So lifelong learning, <laughs> graduate study, do it, it's great. Told you I could talk, <laughs> talk under water, as Simon Bell says. <laughs> um, I'd like to move to in internships now because it's another opportunity and maybe something that people can include in their graduate programs. So Jane, this is really your area. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about the opportunities that people do have and like what sort of benefits and value there is in an, in an internship. Yeah, sure. Um, so I guess one thing that I will start with is, um, and it's always it can be a little tricky for people to get their head around, but the terminology um, around how, uh, what an internship might be called can be different in different industries. So if we think, you know, um, perhaps in the health sector, it might be more practical practicum or there could be um, project-based learning placements uh, placements within education so when I'm talking you know I'm talking broadly about these experiences about these opportunities to engage with industry um, and certainly you know our, our graduate study students have have opportunities to undertake those kinds of experiences um, and look they're, they're great but I guess my top three are to it's an opportunity for you to test your career ideas. Mm -hmm. So you've chosen a profession, but actually where do you want to go in that profession? And I love, you know, your, your idea of failing, you know, sometimes, not often, but sometimes a student will come out of an internship and they'll go, that was not for me. Don't want to work there. And I, said, and I think, well, uh, isn't that great for you to know, having had that learning experience, that that's not where you want to go and now you can refocus and relearn about, you know, where it is you want to take it. Um, so testing those ideas that you might have. Um, students tell us they love the opportunity to actually use the skills that they've developed academically within their discipline and test them and see if they can actually do it in real life. Um, and I think the great benefit too is it's a really great chance for you to um, continue to build on your professional network, yes. um, which is a really key thing to, you know, moving forward in wherever you want to go in your career. So yep. getting to know people within the industry, um, how does the industry work and, and establishing yourself as a, beginning to establish yourself as a professional in your field. So they're my top three. thing about being in the workplace, sorry to interrupt, mm. the thing about being in the workplace is um, that you find the rhythm of the workplace. Mm. Uh, and, you know, you can, read about the rhythm of a workplace or you can read about what a workplace might be like but it's not until you're in the room that you really feel it. Um, learning who to ask the silly question of what are, what are the reporting lines, how does the governance work, who do I ask this question, if I'm feeling unsafe where do I go and so the, the work placement internship practicum helps mediate that transition from learner to expert in the world of work. So I think they're truly valuable opportunities. I know for my internship many, many years ago in my undergraduate, when the most exciting thing in the day was working out whether I was having a hot dog or a hamburger for morning tea, I knew it wasn't the place for me and stayed in universities ever I since. So it was a great with learning barbecue experience. barbecue chicken, which really? was the highlight. Okay. <laughs> it's but let's return to seriousness. <laughs> Ash, did um, you uh, do an internship? I did, I did. Study? Yeah. I did an internship I mentioned before at PPG Industries um, yep. as an engineering site, also had a canteen on site, so sometimes had to make the same choice, <laughs> yeah. hot dog or, uh, or hamburger. Right. <laughs> but um, 
No, like uh, I echo what you were saying before about um, getting to see the like the engineering or the work in practice. You know, like you can go through many years of engineering study and never see a really large piece of equipment. Like an example would be like a distillation column that's 40 metres high and 5 metres in diameter. You just don't get exposed to that at a university because it's not possible in some respects. Mm -hmm. And so it was really good to get on site, get an understanding for the way a plant works, the way you deal with, um, you know, different levels of an organisation and how you navigate yes. those levels of the organisation. Um, one other thing in particular for, from an engineering perspective is engineers design the equipment and they help run the equipment, but they're not the only people on site doing the work. You have operators, you have technicians, you have installers, you've got fitters, people that do a whole range of jobs. And um, well, you've also got you know, finance staff managing the plant, making sure that we don't you know, run out of money. So that a whole range of things that you just aren't really exposed to until you enter the workplace. So an internship was a really great way to get a, like an end-to-end -end view of the way a business operates, the way you, know, you can translate your study into practice. So those relationships then are really crucial, aren't they? And they're unexpected. Yeah, ab absolutely. I actually think Melbourne Uni does a really good job at trying to build that into its coursework. I remember doing an engineering management subject where we actually looked at the way investment decisions are made on site and the way you build a new project. So, you know, do does it have positive cash flow? Does it pay back in the right period of time? All of those things that are, you know, practical realities when you do an internship. And I, one of the projects I did on site was, can we install a new packaging line? And the payback period requirements were far too, uh, far too high and we just couldn't get it done. And so it was a yeah, really good way to put that uh, work into practice and mm -hmm. find the commercial realities of, of businesses in some respects. Yeah. Gee Wing. I feel like a lot of what's been said, I feel like I went through that same steps as in, you say like it helps you to figure out whether you like something or not. For me, I did a couple of internships. So one was a research one at CSRO and another one was an engineering consultancy where I did like the environmental engineering internship. And those ones really helped me to figure out, you know, maybe engineering is not for me and, and, you know, research isn't for me, but I like, both of them were meteorology related. So they really helped me to know, I do want something in meteorology, but it's not engineering, it's not research. And I think the other thing I found most like really valuable about internships was um, building confidence. I don't know about you, Ash, but I, I found like, when I just like start off as an intern, you feel quite nervous. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, like it takes a while to you, come out of your shell. Yeah, you don't you feel really unsure about what you're capable of or like how people will see you. You don't have any confidence in that. But just doing the internship and seeing you're able to, you know, contribute something to the company you're working for and being able mm -hmm. to talk to people that have worked a lot longer than you, I think that's, that's a really big, uh, valuable part for me. And what about when you returned to your study after your internship period? Did you feel sort of any greater motivation, more clarity? Did you do better? better? At, yeah, I was much better at reading process and instrumentation diagrams <laughs> yeah, after being on site. I, like, I think you can translate some of that information back. You know, the things that you learn um, in a workplace are directly related to your studies. Sometimes you don't have the right context or the, the enough context in your studies to really bring it to life and then once you bring that back it, yeah it can definitely make a big difference. Yeah, I don't think the technical content transferred much between work and study or study and work but I found like maybe managing my time effectively and also uh, being independent like you know having my own direction is something that I think the internships help with. Did, did either, speaking of time management I guess, did either of you have do part-time work, have, have to do that while you were doing full-time study? How did you juggle that sort of thing, Ash? Yeah, I did. So I worked in like bars and restaurants through my undergrad and funded right. a, an exchange program to the UK, which was amazing. And then in the master's program also worked, kept working the first year um, in the same sort of bars and restaurants. And then I did my, uh, I did the internship between first and second year masters and then continued working there part-time in the last year, one or two days a week. So it's, it is a challenge um, to balance and there are trade-offs. Like you, you do make trade-offs on your ability to, to deliver study and, and to get maybe higher grades, but it also gives you a bit of freedom. And in terms of working at the same place I did my internship is good, a good resume builder that I think probably trumps the you know, couple of percentage points lost on an exam here or there. And where did you do exchange? 
uh, right. the University of Birmingham. Uh -huh. yeah. And a good experience? Amazing experience, yeah. And I do think you can do, you did it in undergrad, but I guess it's also available for people in graduate as well. Yeah, a number of my peers um, went on master's exchange programs okay. as well, yeah. Cool. And uh, Xi Wang, did you ha work part-time and juggle that while you were studying? Oh, or? A little bit. So that internship, the engineering one, they did give me the option to do one day a fortnight, one day a week. Uh -huh. And I did purposefully keep it quite light because I think it's important to, well, for me, I didn't want to stress myself too hard with, um, you know, giving up my free time. So I, I was quite careful with managing how much extra work I took on. I, was, I also think I was quite fortunate that I didn't have that, you know, financial burden that, you know, like you say, you, you had to fund a trip or some people, they live outside of home and they, they do have to work. And I think mm -hmm. I was fortunate I don't have that stress. Uh, I lived at home when I was studying, so I could use some of that time for volunteering work instead. And, um, you know, just I think having, yeah, just being able to experience things outside of study is a good thing to do. Cool. Managing yourself um, keeps coming up too. You know, you learn to manage yourself um, through some of these graduate processes too, I think. Find where your boundaries are and know where to flex and where to stop and so on. It's probably a lifelong. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. Let me know if you figure it out. I was going to say, I haven't figured that out yet. So, yeah. um, Melissa, question for you. We might have some people in the audience who have had quite a gap since they oh. last studied. Um, do you have any advice for, for people who, you know, five, 10, 15 years away and are thinking of coming back and might be quite daunted by the Just prospect? do it. <laughs> Sorry, Nike, but um, absolutely. Uh, I was one of those. Yeah. And God, permission, permission to focus on what you care about, what you think is important to, you know, improve the way we live. Um, so, you know, permission to look after and look out for your own future. Permission to be bold, curious. Yeah, it comes with some, you know, you can't wash up as often. As often. You have to go and make art, you know. There's certain benefits. So I'd say jump in and do it. There are teams of support at the university to, to, to help um, young people middle-aged people like me uh, come back into an academic framework. Um, the, the tutors leading the classes are, are there as role models for safe practices and for, you know, um, driving how you might think about study if you have had a big gap or if you've in fact not done it at all. Mm -hmm. The other th beautiful thing is the peer networks, I think. Did you find that you had close peer networks that when you went through, you've kept those bonds, I'm leading the witness here, you've <laughs> kept those bonds and you've gone out into industry and kept those things alive, anyone. dreams alive? Honestly, Wrong think, answer. No, I actually work with a number of colleagues that did my year level um, at that uni. you never met? Still at work. No, like some of my best oh. friends I, I went to uni with, but I actually still work with them now at Asahi yes. Beverages. So, yeah. no, it's, it's pretty exciting. Yeah. Yeah, no. I've kept some contact with um, a few good friends and Sometimes, you know, friendship circles always drift but, and like shift and change, but there have That's been right. some from uni still. Yeah. Oh, look, I think it can be very daunting and anything new um, is difficult at times. Um, but, you know, you asked what my advice is, just do it. Jump in, give it a go. And if you don't like it, leave. You know, just make sure it's before census date. Indeed. Is there a big learning curve coming back or do you feel like you can slot oh. right in? No, no, big learning curve. Yeah. Yeah. Do you make friends with the younger people? <laughs> Always. <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah, no, it was great. I've still got a network of um, people that I met. And it was interesting. In, in, in the year that I came back, there was a whole range of um, ages. So, you know, literally people from, you know, straight from undergrad into, post, into graduate study. Mm -hmm. So 23 to 60, and I was in the middle. Yeah, it was great. And you all learn from one another. Education is a very levelling place to be, you know. It's, there is no hierarchy as you're engaging with knowledge and you're engaging with practice and you, you grow together and learn together. So, no, I'm a great advocate, as you can hear. If I've got another four hours, let me know and I'll <laughs> keep spruiking. Well, maybe we'll give Ash a, a, <laughs> another go, but we'll, we might come back to you in a minute. Um, Ash, you sort of indicated that what you're doing now is really quite 
different. It's not really chemical engineering as such. Yeah. But um, I'm just interested in your reflections on how the the graduate degree did help you um, set you up to sort of transfer into this different area. Yeah, I think um, one of the ben- I mean. Simply one of the benefits, apart from just an extra two years of study, which allows you to hone your skills anyway, provides is that you're in a learning environment for a longer period of time at a higher level. And you just, you develop a way of thinking, structure, critical thinking that you don't get otherwise. And so I think it doesn't really matter, even if you diverge completely from your field, all those transferable skills around um, structured thinking, your ability to, to get to the bottom of a problem, uh, communicate across a broad range of people, that's applicable to any industry, any yep. career area. Yep. Uh, I think that's a massive benefit. Um, Spruiking engineering in particular, I think engineers have a great problem solving mindset and sometimes to the detriment in the sense that they're always looking for a problem. But it's, um, yeah, that does allow uh, for me personally in my work um, where I do try to problem solve for most of the, most of the time that um, you can use that really clear and structured approach to, to get the right outcome. So you don't there's no sense in which you're saying you look back and wished you'd done degrees that were directly related to the job you're now in? Not at all. Honestly, yeah, I think, um, yeah, I wouldn't have changed any of my study. Uh, even if I end up in, you know, staying only in finance and strategy, I, I, can't, I can't say that I would ever want to go back and change what I did. Yeah. Okay. And I think that's what the, the benefit of some of the courses that the University of Melbourne offers is that you can curate your own learning pathway and cu- curate your own direction, um, even if it's with microcerts or smaller courses or workshops, masterclasses alongside degrees. Um, so you, could, you can actually, unlike when we went to school, I'm gonna put you in the same box now, um, where you, you, you just had to do what the university told you to do, now you've got many more options to curate your own pathway which is kind of exciting, which is what you do. You don't go from, it's not ABC anymore, I think it's much more organic. And increasingly, that's the reality of careers. That's right. Um, you know, we're, we're morphing and changing as, as 15, the workplace. 15 careers, isn't it? What's yeah, the, the, yeah the, um, oh, it was a few years ago now, but school leavers a couple of years ago, uh, they're saying 17 careers, yeah. um, you know, five kind of profession yeah. changes. So. If there's anything that's constant, it's changed through a career. And so taking your skills and developing them, um, you know, is, is far more common, you know, is the most common model for a career. Mm-hmm. Well, other than that straight tra- trajectory. Yeah. Having said that, Janie, if I'm undergraduate student out there, number of choices of graduate degree, what, what sort of mm-hmm. things would you be thinking through to help make sure. the decision? Is yeah. it... Is it, um, do we look at where jobs are available, what the job markets are like, or what, what would you recommend? Yeah. Well, I guess from a careers point of view, there's a range of ways to look at it. And certainly the job market is one, but that's going to change. And it will have mm-hmm. changed by the time you've finished your undergrad. Mm-hmm. And it will have changed again by the time you've finished your master's. So what you really want to look for is, is something that, you know, a, a course of study that's going to allow you some flexibility mm-hmm. to navigate whatever job market you're faced with. Mm-hmm. Um, so absolutely start there, understand it um, as, as best you can. I think, you know, what Ash was talking about and Melissa about that spark when did you get a spark in your undergrad? What was it about? And how does that connect to a potential career? Um, and also get out of your head. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we can sit there, I don't know what to do. I don't know what I want to be. Um, I don't know how I'm going to get there. And we expect ourselves to come up with the answers. But in fact, by taking some actions, speaking to people in the industry, speaking with your academics and tutors, Um, that you have in your undergrad, Um, getting online, having a look at who employs people in the areas that you're interested in will help inform your decision making. And also if if you're doing undergrad um, here, careers and employability team are here to sort through those very questions um, about how to go about making good career choices, well-informed career choices. I think sketching is going back to design thinking. Yeah, sketching we scenarios. Do mapping. Yeah. yeah, sketch we'll scenarios. <laughs> sketch, sketch, sketch. You know, mm. spend a morning, design ten careers, dream loudly, and think, oh, that felt good. 
back to intuition, back to what you know you and what gave you the spark, what ignited desire. Where do you feel that you'd like to be in ten years' time? It's a good old-fashioned one, that one. Where do you see yourself? How do you imagine yourself? And then just track it back in. But it has to be. You can't do something because, the, as you say, an emerging career, an emerging field might pop. That you might stimulate. You know, mm. if you want to know the future, create it. You know, that sort of. Yeah. So even um, again, maybe back to Jane, once you've, you've chosen a degree and you've started, there's not, of course, there's the subjects and the things you study. We spoke about internships before, but what other sorts of things do you think students could be doing to, mm. to help improve career prospects and discover what's out there? Yeah. Um, so Melbourne Uni's got so much on offer. So there's the fun stuff, like joining the cl clubs and um, societies, and, mm -hmm. and um, that's a great way to meet other peers. Um, and build build that network and it's fun. But there's also professional um, clubs and societies that you should join and be an active part of. Okay. Um, we have a great program called Ask Alumni, where you can register your interest in having a 30 minute career conversation with a past student of the university. Okay, cool. And you, you give information about who you'd like to be matched with. And that's not a one-off. You can do that a couple of times you know, through, through your studies. Um, taking advantage of exchange. Um, so adding um, everything you know, that's here on offer, adding that to your degree really yep. helps to strengthen your understanding of yourself, yes. build your skills um, in communication and teamwork. Um, and I really just round out the experience, I guess, and make it a really great learning experience. Have fun while you're here, enjoy yeah. your study, and take advantage of you know, what's on offer. Ash or Shi Wang, would you like to add to that, reflect on that of the other sorts of things you did while you were doing your yeah, graduate I've, study? I haven't thought of them. Yeah, so <laughs> I, did, um, I did an industry project actually in the master's program. I think it was, I actually can't remember honestly if it was in the master's or the undergraduate. But I, um, I spent a semester at, uh, at the um, St Vincent's Hospital. So yeah. I partnered with um, one of the researchers here who's still a professor um, in the ChemEng faculty. And we did some work um, looking at like bone implants and, and the you know, fluid mechanics of bone in um, bone injury sites. So pretty okay. different to the usual coursework that we were doing anyway. Um, I got to sit in the hospital uh, one or two days a week with the, um, with the research team there, the PhD students and the... Um, all the professors, and it was it was awesome. Actually, it's probably my most enjoyable professional experience I've had to date was that industry project, um, because you have you know real tangible outcomes. You're impacting new research. It's really exciting. Um, hard to balance doing something like that sometimes through your through your usual studies as well, because even though it might take one or two subjects, you usually need to over-index if you want to um, if you want to get the most out of it. But yeah, certainly worthwhile in the long term. Maybe I think uh, volunteering, like I've spoken about it, but, yeah. you know, it, you know the, the one big thing is like, sure, you don't get paid, but you really do get pretty much the same experience you get for working, as in you get to contribute something to someone else, a community or a company. Uh, you get experience just talking to other people and also just being able to give back to the community is a really good um, thing to do and like you find that you probably will end up enjoying or feeling a higher sense of satisfaction just from volunteering and also I think uh, yeah just being able to spend that time and you, you get to pick what times you want to do as well and you might be able to find something that is right in the alley of your study or your interests whereas with a job you might not have that same luxury did you do that through the university or did you source it externally? I did it externally. Yeah. So I did do some, there was an environmental organisation in Moreland that dealt with energy. So, you know, I got to see, you know, some energy efficiency kind of measures. I, I did something with Plan International Australia for a couple of years. So I think that the, the um, yeah, the, the, they get an aid organisation. So I got to see what that space is like. and. Mm. It does just open open your eyes up to yes. different mm. things. Yeah. Fantastic. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, we have our first question that's come through from the audience. Okay. Are you ready? Sure are. Okay. The question is around um, entrepreneurship and innovation. 
and what the how the university um, supports and encourages uh, entrepreneurship, and this is especially sort of in the in the tech space. Has anybody got any? reflections on opportunities to and things that encourage entrepreneurship there was actually a subject in my master's course for like entrepreneurship for engineers i can't remember what the subject was called exactly but yeah. I, I didn't take it i had a few friends that did it and um i think a couple of them came out with a business idea that they pursued for a while i'm not sure i'm not sure they're the new elon musk and they're you know <laughs> driving around in ferraris but um yeah they it, i think it's a, a pretty cool pretty cool subject option to do i, I think it's still running yeah so that's a group, isn't there, for entrepreneurs in a society group? As in, like, does that? I, I forgot the name of it, but it's like a, does it? It's a group. Do you, I don't know whether you can. I think off I, the top of your head. I think there are. There's certainly. I think student clubs in the space, and we have uh, a Melbourne Entrepreneurial Centre, yeah. and it runs programs in, uh, including MAP and TRAM. So they're sort of startup accelerators and things. And then I do think there are a number of a number of subjects like the engineering yep. entrepreneurship or creating innovative professionals, um, a range of subjects that do it. And there is a little bit of an ecosystem around um, Melbourne Connect now, the fabulous new space on the corner of um, Grattan and Swanson Streets. Yeah, not too far across the road from from where we uh, are sitting today. That has really looks at all of those programs and has pitching competitions and things. And I'm just um, Thinking now, funnily enough, about trying to get a really big university-wide um, pitching competition up and running that involves sort of undergrads, graduates, and even staff members of the university. So um, it's um, it's difficult to know who we should be looking at when it's an audience question. I I've realised. Who where's the audience member who asked the question? Yeah, yeah, who are we meant to look at? Yeah, I think one one group. So we do a capstone project for our graduate, the mass end of the. Yeah, your end of your master's kind of research project. Yep. And I do know, yeah, one of my friend groups, so they they did a product for, um, I think, helping babies that were just born. And then, funnily enough, it, I just came across that product, you know, a few years, like right now, like, so I, was, I graduated in 2016, so just this year, I saw that that product's, um, you know, still, it's a company now, and, you know, that those students are now, like, mm -hmm you know, the, the directors of that company. And it's prob I don't know how big the company is, but it seems like, I think if you have to drive to, you know, s do something, you know, start something new, then um, it's definitely possible, I think, then. Uh, that, yeah, biodesign innovation. You yeah. might have mentioned a great, fantastic subject that has so many startups that have, that have spun out of that, that program as well. Is that the baby incubator? Yeah, 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 yeah I've yeah. seen that. Yeah. That's great. Yep. Really exciting. I think so you need... It's a blanket, all right. Yeah, sorry? It's like a blanket. I yeah, think, yeah, yeah. I feel like you need the... Like, if you want to develop something in the tech space in particular for the questioner, you need the technical skills um, or you have to outsource the technical skills. So yep. you can go ahead and do, like, a master's in some commerce field and uh, understand the way to run a new business and to build a new business, and then you're going to need to get someone else or outsource some way to develop the technical side of things. Or on the flip side, you can do a technical master's and try to use those breadth subjects, or ex you know, the elective subjects to develop your, um, your commercial understanding. Yeah. yeah. It's a, imagination is at the core though. Mm. It's the capacity to have the idea and to put, to, to use creative abrasion, to bring a new idea to life and then commercialise it. There's also a range of um, other courses, short courses and micro certs in innovation and creativity and so on across the university that somebody could elect to in, uh, investigate. What are these micro certs? What are those micro certs? <laughs> short, sharp, what a great question. Short, sharp, potent, industry-led courses that are only 42 hours in length, which includes an assessment, some face-to-face -face webinar online or face-to-face. -face. Terrific. You know, sharp upskilling opportunities. Um, we, yeah, it's, it's actually an interesting option because if you're out there thinking about what graduate programs to do, it's actually a little bit of an entry point yes. that you can start yeah. with these things that are like a quarter yeah. of a subject. Yeah. Modular. Um, yes. So yeah, maybe yeah. something else for for everyone. And to be some of them about. do have stacking pathways where you can. Some faculties have designed them uh, in such a way that four microserts will contribute to one subject in a master's level course. So they're very powerful, but also workshops and master classes. There's all sorts of opportunities there for stepping stones. Indeed. Second last of our question. 
uh, tonight, and this one again is for, we'll start with Ash and then Ji Wang. What would be your, your one piece of advice or, or, or really crucial advice for new students just commencing um, a graduate program? That's a good, yeah, it's a good question. I think um, stay open-minded. Like the, the best thing I did, well, I think actually going on exchange was great because I got to experience the way that other universities operate and you get to see how it all works. Yep. But stepping into graduate study, you know, the onus is far more on the student, on the learner. You have to take control of your learning and staying open-minded, making sure you understand what's expected of you and that you can sort of be flexible in the way that you want to learn and the way that you can deal with your studies. Mm -hmm. That made a big difference, I think. Yeah. It's a hard, hard question to answer. That is a big yeah. question. No, I think it's a really good point. I, I, I could have easily, that could be my number one too. Uh, but since you said, I, I probably, I think another one for me would be maybe just follow your interests. Like if you have a passion or interest, you know, if it's study or career, and you just try it out because you know you, d you don't know whether you like it or not before you don't try it. That's, that's my yeah. case. I didn't know if I like it or not before I tried it. And it was important for me to do that Masters of Environment, Environmental Eng to know that's not for me. Um, the other thing I think is, you know, you, you'll probably be working for more than 30 years of your life. So there's no rush to get to work, I feel. Um, that extra two years of study was just, it, it was really fun. It was fun and um, it's a good experience that, uh, yeah, would, you know, would you rush to work? <laughs> yeah, I'd echo that there's no rush. Like, <laughs> honestly, um, it, if I had my time over, one thing I might have done is taken additional electives and just extended the course, even though it's not really going to make a massive difference on whether you graduate, you know, like mid-year or at the end of the year. Being able to explore some of those other areas, you never really get an opportunity like that again in your working life. So true. Yeah, so it's it's a really precious thing in your time at university. Yeah. Although... Again, back to sort of the, the micro certs thing is because that sort of continued professional development. I'll be curious whether you've had op opportunities for that at all so far in your, in your working careers, both Ash and Xi Wang. I, I have a little bit, but not really. So okay. Xi Wang, what about you? I've, yeah, I think I have. So I'm doing a PhD right now oh, as, right. as yeah. part of work. And that kind of came along from something I was doing at work. And they say, oh, you want to turn it into something more formal. And I think that's the point of graduate study that I have we haven't really covered and doing that like a master's or honours it does open up the research pathway yeah um, and I didn't know that right at the time but you know I definitely wasn't considering doing a PhD at the time I was considering doing a master's but just having done it it, it did open up that opportunity to be able to you know pursue research in a higher level. Fantastic I want to come to our Final question, and it can be for all of you or anyone who, who wants to have a crack. Um, what do you reckon makes the University of Melbourne special or sets it apart? What, what's sort of special about this place? Maybe we'll start with Melissa. What's special? Transformational learning, research informed learning and teaching, and access to all of those collaborators across 10 faculties, all of those. Multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary, pluridisciplinary, <laughs> add prefix. Beautiful. Opportunities to collaborate with your peers, with your tutors. Oh, that's no, magic. That, that would be it for me. Terrific. Jane? Uh, I think everything uh, that the university has to offer in terms of the student, student life and student experience yes. in addition to your studies, um, it really is a, a one, you know, a wond wonderful experience that you can access. Yeah. Um, and I would have to say to uh, our fantastic campus here, yeah, and it's great special. to see it coming back yeah. to life. Um, we have cutting edge buildings and, you know, old, old buildings as well. Um, and, you know, a, a history of, um, f from our indigenous um, community as well, mm -hmm. that's celebrated here on campus too. So it's just great a great place to be, yeah. For me, maybe two, like one is the international experience. So it really does feel like an international uni where you have mm -hmm. people from all over the world coming here to study. And also people, or also your, I guess your professors, they also come from all over the world. So you, you feel like you're getting knowledge from many different places. And then the second one just, I think it was touched on, you, you can 
curate your kind of course of learning. So I was quite surprised with how many options you have to pick in, in my degree, in my graduate degree, and even my bachelor's degree. There's just a lot of options to pick from. And I think that's perhaps one of the values from, from a bigger university. They do have more of these uh, learning opportunities or more subjects to pick from, perhaps. And last, but by no means least, Ash. Yeah, well, I mean, what hasn't been said? I think um, <laughs> all of the above. I do miss sitting in Bailey Library, funnily enough, looking at the large windows and the sunset on a late Friday night. But no, I think the professors were a massive, massive change uh, for my study. Like they built meaningful relationships with the students. They took the time to build those relationships, made a really big difference in our learning. Um, aside from the yeah, great, um, great uni, like the campus is amazing, the people were great and it had a really good time with the societies. But I think that, yeah, the professors and their commitment, certainly in the ChemEng faculty, made a massive difference. Quite great. Terrific. Well, um, that draws an, an end to the, to the panel discussion, but thank you very much for joining us this evening. If you do have further questions, you haven't had all your questions answered, then you can make an appointment with our recruitment team to discuss graduate study at Melbourne. You can find a link to the appointments in the Q&A. Uh, or you could join other events in the series which are presented by our faculties to learn more about specific graduate studies and career opportunities available to you. Or join a masterclass and experience what it's like to study a postgraduate course with us. And I think there's also a link in the Q&A where you can register for those events. So thank you all for attending and maybe see you at Melbourne one day soon.